So launched back in 2005, just four years before the financial crash, in a world where the then British Chancellor Gordon Brown famously said, there's no more bust, Land Rover needed to split the Range Rover in two and allow the Vogue to go on and become one of the most luxurious objects on four wheels. But by doing so, they opened up the Range Rover brand to a whole new marketplace, a younger, more stylish audience that wanted a car that was both sporty to look at, fast, but still, as all Land Rover products are, and always have been, very capable off-road. There's strange things out there, these Range Rovers now. I mean, it's basically just a big GT car now because it's too nice to go off-roading with. You just scuff all the wheels and stuff. So what are they then? Like, I mean, some people would just argue that it's a status symbol, just this big high up carriage where you can just peer down at people less opulent than yourself. That's probably why it appeals to Love Island stars and equestrian enthusiasts. And me, to be honest, I'm pretty excited about driving this because I've never driven a Range Rover Sport before and I'd basically just buy this based on its looks alone. And let's face it, the Range Rover is the car that all other SUVs are trying to be. So I take a slightly different stance on the Range Rover Sport. I feel that the lower models can be underpowered, they're too expensive, and you get this look from passers-by of what a and for me, you can buy a better road going car with the BMW X5 and pay less for it. So let's see if I'm wrong. Oh, I love it, mate. I love it. What are your um, first impressions? I mean, the first thing that strikes me is the ride height is absolutely spot on. Like, I love it. I love being up here. I just, like I said in the intro, I just feel like I'm commanding the road and looking down on all the scallywags and scoundrels that can't afford one of these. I think that this model is the one that I would choose, this engine. Would I you? think, yeah, definitely. I think we were looking at the, the models earlier and this is the SDV6 diesel. And this basically has the same sort of torque as the big petrol V8s, doesn't it? Yeah, the torque it's 25 Newton meters less than the V8. So it produces yeah. 600 Newton meters of torque, this engine. Yeah, so like, fair enough, you know, you're not, once you get going in the V8s, it's just gonna be like that constant smack in the back of the head, we're going sort of thing. Yeah. But this off the line, like I put my foot down and for a big car, it this gets, shifts. It gets going, yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And you've got the fuel economy as well. That's the happy medium, yeah. STV6. Yeah. The V8s are gonna be abysmal on fuel. Yeah. And then you've got like your four cylinder petrols, which are just gonna be slow. They're sluggish, they're, un they're underpowered for the car's weight. They produce 200 Newton meters less torque. Yeah, they might be more, they're more brake horsepower, haven't they? But it's, yes. that, that's not what matters in a car like this. No. You need, you need that diesel and more cylinders and there you've got your, you've got your torque. Yeah. See, it's, it's, it's this is it actually makes quite a nice noise for no, a diesel it does, it well, ticks, it? Yeah, it does for a diesel, it sounds great. This SDV6 Dynamic is a 3 litre twin turbo, 6 cylinder diesel, putting out 253 brake horsepower and around 600 newton meters. You can really feel all that torque when you plant the accelerator from low speeds. Prices start at around 72 grand, but that quickly rises when you spec must haves like this one has air suspension and off road pack, £2,800, and a panoramic roof, £2,200. Land Rover stayed at 31 to 37 mile per gallon, but we saw figures closer to low 20s. We were driving spiritedly though. Interior-wise, pretty flawless. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, yeah. what were you saying? Like, Land Rover have basically had to go, you know, 
we've got to make these good now because yeah, cause Audi and Audi, BMW, Porsche are now all making SUVs. They have been for some time. They've been a Land Rover. I feel a very much a company that I feel reacts mm. to, to to what's going on in the market rather than thinking what can we do next. Whereas I think BMW are hands down BMW, Audi are companies that think what can we do next? How can we make yeah. these cars better? There's no doubt that BMW, but being inside an X5 for me will be more refined than this. I, I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. I still love this because. It is a Range Rover, which yes. is what everybody's trying to do. They but, are. But, you know, you are right. Range Rovers of old were notoriously shocking. Unreliable. There's no doubt that this car, you, if you want to even take it down a muddy track, you, you you have to get a, a Land Rover. You have to get a Range That's Rover. That's the thing as well, is that like, even though this is basically going to be sold to people who are going to drop your kids off, you know, sell drugs in it, that sort of thing. On the road, they're not. You don't sell drugs off road. No, do you? you don't. You, you need go into a town centre exactly. to sell drugs. Yeah. So, so it doesn't really matter. No, but, but, but it's it, there. It we'll do it if you need to get some drugs out to someone who lives on a farm, a muddy farm in the middle of somewhere. You know that you will be able to go and sell your drugs to them. Absolutely, one hundred percent agree. And as with all Land Rover products, it has to be able to perform off-road. And we've got the Terrain Response Two in here, air suspension, adjustable air suspension. I tell you what, we had it jacked up earlier on the air suspension. You've obviously seen the, the pictures, and I think it looks absolutely wicked, jacked all the way up to the top like that. Yeah, I think it looks ridiculous. I, I, I just like, I just like being obnoxious and. <laughs> looking like a job in yeah. a big black Range Rover that's really expensive, up high, looking down on everyone. Yeah. And if I can get it a little bit higher than it already is, then you will. That's brilliant. Yeah, fair enough. So I suppose I'd better let you drive it now, aren't I? If you don't mind. You can have a go. I really don't want to get out of it, though. No. It's, uh, I really like it. But maybe I'll feel even more special sat there, because I'll be like a bit of a driver. Yeah, you could sit in the back. I, I won't do that. <laughs> He's a yob. Oh, bitterly cold out there. Once again, having to put the seat back. I'm not a short ass, by the way. If you saw the last video, him calling me a short ass while I was out of the car. It's just he's freakishly massive. How tall are you? About eight foot six. No. I love the driving position, as I did in the Discovery Sport. I like how you can see the bonnet as well and the fake uh, bonnet vents. Yeah, the fake bonnet vents. Yeah, they are good, aren't they? He just didn't move over for you then, did he? He just didn't don't care, did he? he was, he'd rather hit me than the cyclist, that is sad. Yeah. I think that's um, one of the things with this car as well, isn't it? Like, definitely. We've noticed today, everyone seems to look at you like... Everyone thinks you're a cock, don't they? Everyone thinks you're a cock. And we've been overly polite because of because of the kind of vehicle we're yeah, in. We just wave at people that are just waving. Down the road. Hello, thank you very much. Yeah. All that. No one acknowledges you. Yeah. Everyone looks at you like you're a you're a cock. I mean, I personally don't mind that because you I, are a cock. I'm, I, yeah, I am a cock, and I'm trying to. Thanks for that, by the way. Okay. And I, 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 I sort of live my life, you know, like you can't care about what other people think. And this is definitely a car for that sort of person, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I just feel again. I hate to keep throwing the X5 in there, but it is for me the best SUV going. At the entry point, you can get an exceptionally good X5 mm. for 65 grand. Whereas mm. this, I feel like you've got to get into the 70, yeah, 80k yeah, yeah. mark. And I don't think you see many lads in their 30s or girls in their 30s and 20s in, a, in X5s because they're just not as desirable. I think this could well take the prize for the best GT SUV mixing class with brash. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, nice nice yeah. <laughs> um, and I think he was a drug dealer as well. He probably was around here. It's a nice place to be. It is, yeah. You probably feel... one of the nicest places to be in a car. You, that's what they're going for though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, want to be cocooned from the outside world, you know, get away from all these ruffians and scallywags, isn't it? Although we are ruffians and scallywags in the Range Rover. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you buy one? I would definitely buy one. I love it. I think, I think it's absolutely brilliant. I, I just... I just love everything about it. I think it looks great. I love the driving position. I just think it's cool. It suits me, I think. Yeah. I think it suits you, especially with that hat on. Yeah. Would you buy one? No. I know what you'd buy. An right. X5. 
that's correct. Yeah. Because it's a better car. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely... The reason I would pick an X5 over this is because I feel that you're getting better value for money, better standard spec, and I think an for an on-road car mm. that doesn't need to be taken off-road, it's a better car. But as we've seen today, yeah. this car can handle anything that you throw at it. Absolutely. And it's a Range Rover. And it is a Range Rover. Yeah. But don't forget all those looks we had. 